Thank you for being with me tonight. I'm Regina, your life coach here at uh, Live Your Best Life Coaching. And I just want to take a few moments to welcome you. Um, I want to talk with you tonight about hope. Whether you're starting a business, whether you've got a business and this pandemic is affecting it negatively, whether you're concerned uh, about the nation with the events that went on yesterday, whatever it may be, there's still hope. There are so many out there um, today, tonight, that feel hopeless. They, they just feel like they can't carry on. There's nothing available for them. There's no future. But I want to tell you, there is a future for you because number one, Jeremiah 29 11 tells us that the enemy's plan is to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus came that you may live life and life more abundant. So my friend, there is hope for you. And I want to go through, this isn't going to be a very long video. It's not a long lesson. But I want to go through and talk with you about hope and hope in the Bible, um, where we find it. You know, whether we're in business or just living our daily lives, whatever it may be, hope is important. Hope is very, very important in our lives. <clears throat> and often we get discouraged. And, you know, I want to be the first to tell you. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not be okay. But let someone know that you're not okay. Let someone help you. Let someone stand beside you. Because you don't have to do this alone. No matter what it is, you don't have to do it alone. So number one, God has solutions to our problems. And his ways aren't our ways, so his solutions are much better, much better than ours. Um, you know, I, I like to listen to Graham Cook teach as much as possible. He is just a, a wonderful, wonderful teacher. He has a brilliant mind. He's full of God's wisdom. And a few months before... I was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. I had listened to a teaching of his, and he talked about how we embrace circumstances in life and how we embrace problems, circumstances that we don't want to arise, and how they just knock us off of our feet. One of the things Graham said is, you know, that circumstance comes, and what's the first thing we do? We pick I throw mine. <laughs> but we pick up our telephone and um, we get on it. We start dialing. When the person we've dialed answered the phone, we go, It's here. That problem I told you about, it's here and I don't know what to do. It's going to drive me crazy. I, I have no control over it. I don't know how to fix this. What advice do you have? But what if we took a different approach. This is what Graham said. What if we took a different approach? You should think about that a minute. It's really easy to get stressed out, to get worried. And these are the things that God tells us not to do. But it's very easy for our flesh, because our flesh desires that control over everything. And God wants us to be willing to surrender our control to Him. So what if the next time that surprising circumstance arises, you pick up your phone, you dial your prayer partner, and you get them on it and you say, Guess what? 
that problem I told you about, well, it showed up today. It come knocking on my door. I knew it was coming because Holy Spirit was here. I knew it was going to be a doozy because he was bouncing off the walls. He's excited. He's ready to defeat the enemy and prove to me what he can do. It's a change of perspective. Now, am I telling you that I get excited about circumstances in life that I don't like, that don't feel good, that that hurt? No. I'm human. I have the same emotions you do. But I have been working for a long time on changing my mindset and living in more peace and walking in the hope of the Lord. So... Like I said, I learned this just a few months before being diagnosed with cancer back in 2016. And as I lay in that hospital bed that night after I received the diagnosis, God started bringing certain things that he had been teaching me to my remembrance. And this particular teaching of Graham's was one of those things that came back. I pulled it up and I played it for my husband and I said, you know what, I choose to live. I make that choice. Fear's not welcome here. Fear, you gotta go. I choose to live. Holy Spirit's here. He's bouncing off the walls, and he is going to turn this hospital upside down because he's going to save me. Because God's Word says, by his stripes, I am healed. So, um, there's nothing too big for God. Might be too big for me. It might be too big for you, but there's nothing too big for God. Nothing at all. So as I walked through this journey with cancer, there were, there were days that I was so weak I could hardly hold my head up. Days that I was so sick. But each day, my prayer was, Lord, I surrender my desire to be in control of this situation to you. I'm willing to walk through whatever I have to to get to that new beginning that you are giving me. But I surrender my desire to be in control to you. Now listen, this wasn't a one-time prayer. This was an everyday, multiple times a day prayer, and I would just repeat it out loud over and over and over until I felt it in my bones. And it might stay there five, ten minutes. And that little voice come creeping back up again. And I start up again. Lord, I surrender my desire to be in control of this situation to you. I trust you. And I would say it again until I felt it so deep within my soul. This was a daily thing for me. And I'm here to tell you. Every victory I've ever had has come through surrender. It's all come through surrender. God desires that we trust Him. We can put our hope in Him. Now, I told you, God has solutions to our problems. We find in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. That's the New Living Translation. Um, in fact, these most of these scriptures will be New Living Translation. Our second point, God's grace is sufficient for every need. God's grace is sufficient for every need. Every time I read that scripture now, I think about um, Joseph Prince. He's another pastor that I enjoy listening to, and I love his excitement. I love the anointing that is on him. Um, but he was given a message talking about God's grace being sufficient. And, you know, he says, when this mountain comes to you, and tries to squash you, and this is not a direct quote, this is definitely my paraphrase, but when this mountain comes to you trying to squash you, trying to tear you down, what do you do? You look at it and you shout, Great Grace! 
great grace. Great grace. Say it with me one more time. Great grace. Because God's grace moves those mountains. Number three. God is able to do more than we can ask or more than we can imagine. You know, there are times we don't even know what to pray. We have no idea what to pray, what to ask for, other than God's will. And that's where Holy Spirit says, hey, I'll pray for you. I'll intercede for you. Open your mouth. Let my groanings come out and they'll go before God. I'm here praying for you. Jesus is your intercessor. He's there praying for you. God's word tells us that our ways are not his ways. And that his ways are much, much higher than ours. We can't even fathom his ways. But when we surrender it to him, when we give it to him, He's able to do more than anything we could ask or even imagine. How do we know that? Because it's written in Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. That's the New International Version. <clears throat> Number four, God is always faithful always faithful he's never going to leave you he's never going to forsake you he's always there he walks the journeys with you even in your darkest moments even when it feels like he's not there you know i can remember the the, the footprints in the sand prayer of god carrying you know when there's only one set of footprints that's god carrying you and you didn't even realize it. And I often laugh. There's a, a meme that goes around Facebook some. And it's God dragging a man down the beach. And you know the man's like, well, what is this? And God says, this is when you resisted. He wants to bless us so much. Sometimes we resist. Be willing to receive. Because he is able to do more than anything we could imagine or ask. And he's always faithful. We know he's always faithful because it is written in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 32 in the New Living Testament. Though he brings grief, he also shows compassion because of the greatness of his unfailing love. Number five, hope is an anchor for the soul. Hope is an anchor for the soul. So you don't have to drift from here to there, everywhere, in a frenzy. Let that hope anchor your soul to your spirit where God resides. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 19 through 20 says, We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf. Having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So the next thing is for us to put our hope in God. And that's, that's where you have to do it. It's, that's something for you to do. Your action. You have to place your hope in God. I encourage you to read Psalm chapter 42. Um... I'm only going to read one verse out of that chapter, but I encourage you to go back and read the entire chapter. But it is written in Psalm 42, verse 5, New King James Version. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. We can place our hope in God. Some of the darkest days that I've ever experienced, I've had that hope restored. I've had joy return. I've had breakthrough just by praising God, just by putting on a CD and worshiping Him. There's been times I've sat there 
seven hours at a time doing nothing but worshiping him releasing those cares to him it works you know it maybe it don't work the same for you maybe there's another way that you worship we're all individual so what works absolute for me may not work absolute for you i do want to say that you're all uniquely and fearfully made but there is some form of worship it may not take seven hours it may take longer than seven hours but there's something there a form of worship a form of surrender a form of honor to God that he can restore that joy that he can restore that hope and that faith again I uh, I last encouraged you to read Psalm 42. I now encourage you to read Psalm 146, verses 3 through 10. I'm only going to look at a couple of those scriptures that's there in the middle, which is Psalm 146, verses 5 and 6. But go back, that Psalms 146, verses 3 through 10. Now, Psalm 146, verses 5 and 6 says, How blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. Number eight, hope produces endurance and perseverance. Hope produces endurance and perseverance. It is that hope that helps you walk that journey through whatever circumstance, through whatever dark time. Hope produces that endurance. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3 says, As we pray to our God and Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number 9. Believers have a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is one we should never forget. We have that living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As is written in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If he'll raise Jesus from the dead, if he'll raise Lazarus from the dead, if he'll raise um, the soldier's daughter from the dead, honey, he'll raise you from the dead. He'll do it. Maybe you're saying, but my business is dead. Don't give up. Ask God to help you, to give you his wisdom to give you his knowledge and his understanding and follow his instructions. Every miracle we ask for is going to come with instructions. You're going to have to be obedient to follow those instructions. Take that action in order to receive that miracle. And you also have to be willing to receive the miracle. That was receiving was one that I really had to work on. And I believe that's one reason I had to go through the battle with cancer. Because I had to learn to receive. I couldn't even receive a compliment from somebody. I had to learn to receive. I was good at giving. And I had almost given away my very livelihood. So I had to learn to receive. Because your life, your business, it's just like a bank account. If you put out and put out and put out, withdraw, 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 but you never make any deposits, you can give away your very life form. So it's important to recognize your value and to invest in yourself. Hope is one way to invest in yourself. And number 10, trusting in the God of hope will bring you yet more joy, more peace, and yes, more hope. 
Romans chapter 15 verse 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of Holy Spirit. No matter what your circumstance is, even, even if it's, like I said, being upset about the events of this election, the events that took place yesterday, surrender those things to God. Trust Him. Know that He knows what He's doing. And let that hope remain. And if you feel like it's slipping away, ask Him to give it back. Give you back hope. Give you grace. Give you mercy. Because He's willing, more than willing, to do it. Let us pray. Father, I just thank you for this lesson on hope that you have given us. Lord, I just ask you to restore hope to each one listening to this that feels hopeless and heartbroken and beaten down. Lift them up. Allow them to feel your love, to experience your love as never before. Father, your word is full of hope. It's full of life. And I ask you to restore that to them, to present to them the miracles that they are seeking. Lord, I, I ask you to give them your wisdom, your understanding, your knowledge, your direction in what they're to do and where they're to go. And I ask you to bless them, surround them with your favor as a shield, bring them that peace and that hope which surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with me this evening. I pray that you have a blessed evening. You get plenty of rest. Tomorrow's a new day. It's a new beginning. Go into it full of hope. God bless you.